What's up, everyone? This is the Chicago Sports Talk. Michael back at it again with a nut full analyst. Um, you know, the Bears squeak by another victory win against the Minnesota Vikings. Now, there's a lot of good. There's also a lot of bad in this one too, as majority of most of these will be in. Because watching this game to the bill at the end, people want to fault Justin Fields for almost costing us the game, which is fine. You know, those two fumbles were on Justin Fields. But when he was presented the opportunity um, near the end of the game, he took advantage. Now, this isn't the reason why the Bears were not were in this game mostly is because of defense alone. Defense had four interceptions on Joshua Dobbs, who literally – had solid performances back to back one against the Falcons and one against the saints. And I think he had like one good performance before the Broncos game and the, and this game, obviously, because, because here's the thing, what y'all don't understand. You keep saying the bears win was not impressive. Yeah. Which, you know, the score is ugly because the bears did not score. The Vikings team still is a solid team. They had a good offense, their defense, um, is pretty solid because they have a good coordinator that actually blitzes majority of the time. Like, and the offensive game plan, I didn't necessarily hate it. I just didn't um, like the obsession by Luke Getze. Like, there's some good, there's some bad about it because at the end of the day, yeah, I understand the Vikings were going to blitz a lot in this game, but wouldn't it kill Luke Getze? to attempt a pass downfield. Like, I get it. The Vikings were going to blitz a lot, but at the end of the day, you have to know if JF1 is the guy going forward. And he did show the Bears that at the end of the game, you know, he did lead a game-winning drive down the stretch to get the Bears in prime position to win the game. But overall, I just... I don't know what was the obsession with these wide receiver screen passes by Luke Getze. It's just like, did he come in this game plan knowing that the Vikings were going to blitz? Or did he, um, you know, try, you know, not what this coaching plans to do, like tr uh, plays not to lose, which at the end of the day, all the credit in the world goes to the Bears defense. Montez Sweat had two sacks. Jalen Johnson had an interception, and he should have had two, but he, uh, which would have been a pick six, and it was dropped. Jaquan Brisker had an interception. TJ Edwards had an interception, and Kyler Gordon had an interception. So that tells you how long and behold this um, team has come as a defense. Yes, the defense has had struggles in, in uh, two-minute drills. But overall, um, this team is just like some – overall, they do good and ultimately sometimes causes them. And it's like we have to – we're our, and I was talking to my buddy about this, um, my Bears buddy in the group text – it was like the Bears offense just relies on luck, which, again, luck is a part of the game, regardless of what people believe it or not. But you shouldn't rely on luck constantly. Like we need to uh, we need to create a offensive game plan for the majority of our games. And I do think. um. People are saying that Luke Getzey's going to get fired or he's going to, you know, hand over play calling duties. It's not going to happen, folks. I'm sorry. It's just like, even if we, even if the Bears lost, no one's getting fired until the end of the season because that's how the Bears do things. I know you can bring up Matt Canada and how the Steelers, um, you know, you know, actually grew some balls and actually fired Matt Canada in season, but it, it will not happen for the Bears. It probably never will happen. Even if the Bears started off the season 0-6, the head coach would still be here because that's not what the Bears do because the coordinator, not the coordinator, the 
that the GM and um, president of the Chicago Bears do not uh, – our hands tied behind the back because the McCaskies don't do that. But I do want to say this. Under Matt Everflues, even though Matt Everflues had cost us games uh, – defense cost us games against the Broncos – and um, the Lions under four minutes. Overall, I think Eberflus did change the defense than what people expect. But do I see him as the guy going forward? No, I do not. I don't think he's a. I don't think he's a good head coach. He, he's just good as a uh, defensive coordinator, which majority of head coaches are now these days in the NFL. Um, Necessarily, yeah, you could necessarily almost fault JF1 for almost losing us this game, but when he was presented the opportunity, he took it. Now, I did see a little bit on ESPN saying that the Bears have to move on from Justin Fields, this and that, after he had a game-winning drive. My question was, which my question is to every single fan that's watching this, is which quarterback daily present past top five, top 10, top 30 would have done better because this offensive coordinator, all the, all it, they do is call screens. Even when Justin Fields is out, it was still the same scenario. Like I don't see any quarterback succeeding with this offense. And you have to be lying to yourself if you think otherwise, because all this uh, all the team does is call uh, offense. It's like call screens. Like they play not to lose instead of playing to win. Like um, unlike the other head coach, uh, Kevin O'Connell, even though Joshua Dobbs had four interceptions, he still pushed the ball down the field. Now I do want to see how this team evaluates during the bye week. Maybe. Maybe they give playing calling duty duties to somebody else, but I do want to. I don't want to see screens. It's like once or twice, yeah, but constantly, no. I don't want to see screens. Now, anyways, I do want to make this quick short on my full analyst. Like the defense and Cairo Santos won us the game overall, but also I want to. DJ Moore is proven every uh, every step of the way. He passed over a thousand yards this year. Like I said, he's going to be a big addition to this Bears offense going forward and maybe Marvin Harrison Jr. will as well. And also Montez Sweat is proving every ounce that he is worth every penny of that time. So anyways, that's that's all for today's video. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. As always, happy Victory Tuesday. As always, bear down.